بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده ما بعد Dear respected brothers, elders, my young and my honorable mothers and sisters listening Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty the kind the most merciful has blessed us with a day of happiness the day of Eid say alhamdulillah and on this day of Eid we have shelter over our head say alhamdulillah on this day of Eid we have good good foods to eat say alhamdulillah on this day of Eid we have good clothes to wear say alhamdulillah on this deed we have clothes to wear say alhamdulillah on this day of Eid we have food to eat say alhamdulillah for many of our brothers and sisters across the world for them this day of Eid does not mean that they have any new clothes to wear and this day of Eid does not mean that they have any good food to eat nor does this day of Eid mean that they even have a shelter a roof over their head may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them the sha'ir the poet he says laysa al-eidu laysa al-eidu liman labis al-jadid innama al-eidu liman ta'atuhu tazid laysa al-eidu لمن لبس الجديد إنما العيد لمن خاف يوم الوعيد ليس العيد لمن تجمل باللباس والركوب إنما العيد لمن غفرت له الذنوب. The poet says that this day of Eid and this day of joy and this day of فرحة and happiness is not for that person who wears new clothes. Who dons himself in new clothes this day of happiness is really not for that person who's able to decorate and adorn himself externally <inaudible> true Eid and true a day of happiness is for that person whose internal and whose batin and whose good deeds have increased in the month of Ramadan then the poet says, ليس العيد لمن لبس الجديد إنما العيد لمن خاف يوم الوعيد True Eid is not for that person again who has managed to increase his good deeds only for the month of Ramadan. But true Eid and day of happiness and day of joy and day of smiling is for that person who manages to maintain what he has done in the month of Ramadan and take it forward to the hereafter when he is to stand before Allah. May Allah make us from amongst these people. Then the poet says, ليس العيد لمن تجمل باللباس والركوب إنما العيد لمن غفرت له الذنوب Eid is not for that person who wears the good clothes and who rides the best of rides, drives the best of cars. Eid is not for this person. Eid is for that person whom has spent the month of Ramadan in such a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all his sins. May Allah make us from amongst these people. And what a waste would it be that a person who spends the entire month of Ramadan exerting himself and carrying out different types of mujahadat, efforts and sacrifices to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he throws it away on the night of Eid or the day of Eid. What a waste would it be? What a waste would it be that those nights that you spent standing before Allah after Salatul Isha that you don't do throughout the whole year now comes after Ramadan and those same hours of the night you are awake but you are in the disobedience of Allah. This time you don't find yourself in the masjid but you find yourself in a cinema. You don't find yourself in the masjid but you find yourself in a club. You don't find yourself in the masjid but you find yourself on the corner of the streets backbiting, dealing. What a waste would it be that the month of Ramadan, the night hours you spend listening to the Quran. Now you come after the day of Eid and these hours of the night you are still awake but you are listening to music. What waste would it be that 30 days of exertion in the nights you would open the Quran and you would look at it. Now after the month of Ramadan, just the night of Eid had to come and you now you are watching movies. 
The same you was awake for 30 days and 30 nights of Ramadan and you managed to control yourself. You managed to control yourself and obey Allah and stay away from the disobedience of Allah. You still are the same person. Nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is that with the Adhan of Maghrib yesterday, the Shayateen were released. So the evil force is more powerful and has increased in intensity. That's all that's changed. But your Iman that you built in Ramadan and your strength to obey Allah, that is still there. That is still there and that still can be used to now fight shaitan, to now oppose shaitan, to now stay firm upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That strength you still have right now. But like with all things, until you don't maintain it and until you don't do something with it, it decreases, it goes down. Similarly, with your internal iman strength and your energy to do good deeds. If you do not maintain this energy, if you do not lubricate this energy, oil this energy, check on this energy, make effort to increase this energy, then this energy will die down. And in terms of spiritual energy, it is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it assists you to do good deeds. But if a person had no spiritual motivation, so come Dhuhr Salah time, his, it's the day of Eid, and he has lost all his spiritual motivation because of sin X, Y, and Z. He's lost his spiritual motivation. It still is not an excuse to miss your Dhuhr Salah. Allah will not say that, hey, look, I didn't give you the spiritual energy, the desire, the motivation, so therefore you didn't perform your dhuhr salah. No problem. Allah will not say that. So we understand that the blessing of Ramadan that helped us increase our spiritual energy, that is a blessing and a motivator for us. If we neglect, belittle, and don't take advantage of this motivator and we commit sin and we release all this spiritual energy and it disappears and then we have to obey Allah without this spiritual energy we still have to do it we still have to obey Allah we still cannot misuse our eyes we still cannot misuse our ears we still have to perform our salah five times we don't have a choice we still have to give zakah Next month of Ramadan comes, we still have to fast. So what a waste would it be that the spiritual energy you built up in the month of Ramadan, that motivation, you just throw it away and say, you know, I don't need it. It's not important. I can just disobey Allah. And then I'll see tomorrow, inshallah, I'll go for Dhuhr Salah. And inshallah, I'll go for Asr Salah. And inshallah, I'll go for Maghrib. And inshallah, I'll go for Isha. And I'll pray my full rak'at of Eid Salah. And I'll actually do some optional worship as well. I will open the Quran on the day of Eid as well. Because Quran was not revealed only to open in Ramadan. It was revealed as a manual for my day-to-day -day life. I will open it today as well. So the choice is yours. Maintain the spiritual energy and use it to make ibadah easy for you. And the more you continue to do ibadah, the more this spiritual energy will continue to strengthen. Or throw it away and make life harder for yourself and continue the struggle you had before Ramadan, after Ramadan as well. And Ramadan is just an abstract month that came in between and you did what you did and it doesn't mean anything for you after Ramadan. The choice is yours. But the wise one would maintain his spiritual energy and use it to ease his good deeds and a'mal salihah moving forward in the coming year of 11 months. And this is what the Quran encourages us, my brothers. This is what the Quran says. Quran says that taqwa is not the objective of only the month of Ramadan. 
Taqwa was made easy to acquire in the month of Ramadan, but Taqwa needs to be maintained and implemented throughout the year for 12 months of the year. Every day of the year, every hour of the day, every minute of the hour, every second of the minute, and every moment of our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives many instructions in the Quran while majority of them are detached from Ramadan completely detached from Ramadan if anything only one is attached to Ramadan the all are detached from Ramadan Ya ayyuhan nasu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ya ayyuhan nasu abudu rabbakum that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says oh people you need to do ibadah of your Rabb you need to worship your Rabb because without worshipping your Rabb you will never get success. Alladhi khalaqakum because he has created you. And why should you worship your Rabb? La'allakum tattaqoon so that you can come onto this path of taqwa. Because if ibadah does not lead you to taqwa then your ibadah is not the ibadah that is desired. If you're performing salah and still you're not instilling the fear of Allah in your heart you don't fear him more after you prayed salah as much as you feared him before praying salah if your fear hasn't increased in Allah then that means your ibadah has not given you the objective of what it actually was there for that means maybe our sincerity is lacking in our salah maybe our wudu wasn't done properly before salah maybe the arkan that we are doing and completing in salah maybe they're not properly how they need to be we need to check on ourselves the objective of life is taqwa the objective of life is taqwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that wama ataakum ar rasul fa khudhu wama nahaakum anhu fantahu life is about the do's and the don'ts taqwa is refraining and doing is doing Taqwa is refraining. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whatever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gives you, take it. So do it. Make effort and do it. And whatever He refrains you from, tells you to stay away from, then stay away from it. Because if you only take what the Messenger of Allah is giving you, so you do something about it, and you don't refrain from what He is stopping you from, then your Iman will never be complete and you cannot be entitled to Jannah. You cannot be entitled to Jannah. In another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ Every ummah we sent a Rasul and every Rasul had, had this message. Do the do's and stay away from the don'ts. Do the do's, stay away from the don'ts. Another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ma'al ladheena attaqo wal ladheena hum muhsinoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance is with those who refrain and with, with those who do good deeds. Refraining and doing good deeds. Refraining and doing good deeds. Until today we have only emphasized in our culture, we have only emphasized the importance of doing something. So, every time we tell one another, we say, Brother, pray your salah. We don't say, brother, don't miss your salah. We only say, pray, come for fajr. We don't say, don't miss your fajr. We say that, we say to someone that read Quran. We don't say to them that don't listen to music. So we say, listen to Quran. But what we don't say is don't listen to music. We always lean on because this is how we've been raised. This, this is what we do. We always encourage people to do good deeds. And only the brave and the courageous, they encourage people to refrain from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to take a switch. We need to switch this around. We need to stop people from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because imagine the person who is, in, who is in Africa, who is in Sudan, who is in Somalia, who is in Afghanistan, and he has this bucket with him and he goes to the well. Say, I'm going to fill up some water from the well. So he fills all the water and does the hard work walking two, three miles to the well. He fills up the bucket. Then he fills it and he is now taking it back to his home. 
When he gets home, he sees that my bucket is empty. Why is it empty? Because my bucket had holes underneath it. What he was putting inside there were his good deeds, mine and your good deeds. That's what we do. We fill our lives up with good deeds. We fill our lives up with do's. What we don't think about is the don'ts. So what we do is we continue poking holes in our deeds. So we, we do this don't in our life. We do that don't in our life. We disobey Allah this way, that way. At the same time, we're doing good deeds. So we're coming for Dhuhr Salah and then we sit in our car from the masjid and we turn on the music and we go home. We're watching a movie, we pause the movie, we come to the masjid, pray salah, go back, carry on the movie. We backbite about people on the way to the masjid, then we come inside and we say, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So we're not worried about the holes that we are poking into our good deeds. So let it not be that on the day of judgment when we are there ready to receive great reward, expecting that we're going to see much reward for all our hard work in our life. We see there that there's nothing there. There's nothing there. People will take away your good deeds in recompense for the bad that you have done to them in this world. They will take away. And the hadith states that when none of your good deeds will be left, then Allah will say to these people that will not stop coming for their rights, offload your bad deeds to this person now. Offload your bad deeds. So this person will start with a mountain of good deeds and he will end up with a mountain of bad deeds. Why? Because he wasn't considerate about the holes that he's poking into his bucket of good deeds in this world. Now let me give you the final thing before we conclude. If this person had no holes in the bucket and it was only a three-year-old that went with his mom to collect some water from the well, so he had a very small bucket, his place play, Play-Doh bucket. Yeah. And all he did is fill that even that even half. That's all he filled half of that as well And then he carried it for three miles home Is he not better than that person who went with a big bucket and he was an adult and he was strong And he filled it all up that when he got home it was empty Is this child still not better than that person? who is capable of earning the pleasure of Allah, capable of doing many more good deeds, more stronger in Iman, but the only problem is he doesn't refrain from evil. This child is still better than that person because at least he'll walk, come home with some water. At least there'll be something to benefit from when he brings it home. When he goes into the hereafter, there'll be something there. So let's be smart people and focus on the refraining from the sins of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the disobediences and whilst we're doing that, doing our good deeds as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first will give me then the rest of you the ability to act upon this. Before we continue with the announcements, if I can... Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الحمد لله المنعم المحسن الديان ذي الفضل والجود والإحسان ذي الكرم والمغفرة والامتنان الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي أرسل حين شاع الكفر في, الكفر في البلدان صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ما لمع القمران وتعاقب الملوان الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد فيا أيها المسلمون وقد خرجتم إلى صلاة العيد وقلوبكم قد امتلأت به فرحا وسرورا فاحمدوا الله على الإنعام بالتمام والتوفيق للصيام والقيام واسألوه الرضاء والقبول 
الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل قوم عيدا وهذا عيدنا وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا كان يوم عيدهم يعني يوم فطرهم باها بهم ملائكته فقال يا ملائكتي ما جزاء أجير وفى عمله قالوا ربنا جزاؤه أن يوفى أجره قال ملائكتي عبيدي وإمائي قضوا فريضتي عليهم ثم خرجوا يعجون إلي بالدعاء وعزتي وجلالي وكرمي وعلوي وارتفاع مكاني لأجيبنهم فيقول ارجعوا قد غفرت لكم وبدلت سيئاتكم حسنات قال فيرجعون مغفورا لهم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وهذا الذي ذكر في ذلك اليوم كان فضله وأما أحكامه فعن ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر صاعا من تم أو صاعا من شعير على العبد والحر والذكر والأنثى والصغير والكبير من المسلمين وأمر بها أن تؤدى قبل خروج الناس إلى الصلاة ومنها الصلاة والخطبة فقد كان عليه الصلاة والسلام يخرج يوم الفطر والأضحى إلى المصلى فأول شيء يبدأ به الصلاة ثم ينصرف فيقوم مقابل الناس والناس جلوس على صفوفهم فيعظهم ويوصيهم ويأمرهم بقيت المسألتان أيها أيها المسلمون فنذكرهما الآن الأول قال عليه الصلاة والسلام من صام رمضان من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستا من شوال كان كصيام الدهر الثانية كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يكبر بين أضعاف الخطبة يكثر التكبير في خطبة العيدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بارك الله بارك الله لنا ولكم ولسائر المسلمين ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر رؤوف رحيم استغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الله أكبر 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 ولله الحمد الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى, عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبارك بارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد أرسله الله تعالى بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله الله أكبر ولله الحمد 
قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفر للعباس ولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبهضهم فببغضي أبهضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم احفظ الحرمين الشريفين والمسجد الأقصى المبارك والمسجد الأقصى المبارك والمسجد الأقصى المبارك واجعل اللهم آمنة مطمئنة إنة وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان خصوصا في فلسطين وصدان وأفغانستان وفي كل وجميع بلاد المسلمين اللهم إنا نسألك موجبات رحمتك وعزائم مغفرتك والسلامة من كل إثم والغنيمة من كل بر والفوز بالجنة والنجاة من النار اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجت ولا كربا إلا نفست ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا غائبا إلا حفظت والورددت ولا عسيرا إلا يسرت ولا ضالا إلا هديت ولا ظالما إلا خذلت ولا مظلوما إلا أيدت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا شهيدا إلا قبلت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخر هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا قضيتها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعتك رقابنا من النار اللهم تقبل صيامنا وقيامنا وأعنا على دوام الطاعات مخلصين لك الدين اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك الفائزين المتقين المرحومين اللهم أعد علينا رمضان ومن علينا بالصيام والقيام اللهم هذا العيد عيد عز ونصر وتمكين لل الإسلام والمسلمين وفي رضاك يا أرحم الراحمين تقبل الله منا ومنكم يا أيها الأحباب والمسلمون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته